So attachment theory will tell you uh, how you formed bonds when you were a baby with your parents or your caregivers um, will dictate how you develop relationship bonds as you're older. Okay, so there's four different attachment styles. There's a secure attachment style, which 50% of the population is in the secure attachment really? style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a little higher than I thought. Very high. I thought it was going to be <laughs> no, a lot so lower. like 20 or something, like something no. lower. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So then there's an anxious attachment style, which about 20, 20 to 20 to 25% of the oh, population okay. falls into that. Avoidant. Then, avoidant, yes. Avoidant. I did my so homework. The other one, 20 to 25. And then. Wait, wait, wait. I know the last one. Uh, fear. Fearful. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Did so your that, homework, son? You did oh, your homework? I looked up a little bit. Yeah. All right, good. So the fearful is a combination of anxious and avoidant attachment style, okay. but it's very few. It's like 5% of people are in that one. So the good thing about this is that it's not permanent. You know, we all want to eventually be at a secure attachment style, but it's fluid, like it changes. And the more you are aware of where you fall, the more you can be intentional about working towards bettering yourself and being better for the relationship that you're in. Now, secure attachment styles, these people are comfortable being vulnerable. They're not wondering whether their partner loves them or they're not insecure in their relationship. They're comfortable. They can be open. They're welcoming to their relationship. Um, they can express their needs in a positive way. They're not questioning whether their partner's cheating on them or anything like that. They're good. They're happy in their relationship. They're able, they're, they can easily uh, give love and receive love. Anxious attachment style. So they have a negative, negative view of self. So in their mind, they're like, I'm not good enough. This person's going to leave me. So I need to anxiously hang on to them. And they struggle with being alone. And if they're single, they're not single for very long. Mm. They will. And it's not necessarily because they have this wide social network it's just because they're very quick to move on very quick to i need to be and you grab onto else. something exactly for okay. comfort because they find validation in their relationship so the way that they feel good is they hold on and they hold on tight and so these are the people that are kind of questioning like oh i'm not good enough of course he's going to cheat on me i need to just keep them um really close so that nothing happens and i don't get hurt right but at the same time sorry it it, it also I can also see how that can, well, I guess that's the point, but because yeah. like you don't want to let them go and you you almost want to like hold on to them. But right. Having that type of mentality is only going to drive the other person crazy. It's Absolutely. like, I ain't doing anything. Yeah. Like, why do you think that everything I'm doing is, exactly. is yeah. out to get you and stuff? And so the only people, the people that, if you're an anxious attachment, so you kind of find yourself in this category. Um, you want somebody who is a secure attachment style because they're able to meet your relational needs. So they're able to say, hey, I'm I'm here for you. We're good. You're good. Um, nothing's wrong. They're able to comfort you um, and provide you that security that you need. That's somebody who's an avoidant, who's like thinks highly of themselves, but then is like not trusting of others and doesn't think that the other people are capable of meeting their needs as well as they can meet them for themselves. So they're those are the people that are wonderful in the beginning. But then as the relationship progresses and you're trying to have serious conversations and be more vulnerable, they're like, uh, they'll make a joke out of it or they'll just kind of like move away from vulnerability because they struggle with that. So they struggle with, they view relationship as a trap and it's like, oh my gosh, being in a relationship, it's so much commitment, so much of my life giving it up for somebody else. I'm not, no one is worth me doing that. Damn, that's so, how I used to be, I think. I think. Yeah. I used to be like that. Heavy. I mean, the last one, go over the last one. And then oh, we can so fearful fear. yeah. is just a combination. That's like a double negative. It, almost, yeah, right? it's literally a double negative. I have a negative self view and I have a negative view of others. So mm. I'm not good enough and um, others aren't going to love me because I'm not good enough, but they're I can't trust them either. But I want a relationship. It's just... <laughs> Nothing like, works. That's like a terrible don't way work. to go. They don't work. Exactly. That's like a terrible way to go through life. No? Oh, it's, it's how, horrible. Like, how, how does someone even land on that one? Like, what are some things that someone can go through to even feel they're not yeah. worth it and no one's worth it for them? To get to that point, like, you know. People that are, well, one, they struggle with them, their own self-esteem. So they have their own insecurities. But not only that, they've been betrayed or it hasn't worked out with other people. They have think about people like if... If I'm already insecure and I think 
badly of myself and then somebody comes along, I'm in this relationship, this person treats me horribly and then cheats on me, I walk out with a new scar. So now it's like, what am I to, what does my, where does my mind automatically go? I'm not good enough. They cheat on me because I'm terrible. Mm. But now I can't trust people either because this is always going to happen to me. Jesus. That's